Hi, this is Geshe Michael Roach. Uh, welcome to the Peachtree World News. Um, I'm at home uh, pre-recording this uh, the morning before your show because uh, my wife, Veronica, uh, had a total knee replacement about a week ago. And uh, I've been the nurse and the cook at home and everything's going well. And I just uh, have to stay home for a couple of weeks here. Uh, this is the time of year uh, when I usually hide uh, for about a month and translate, uh, finish the translations of one of the great books that our team is translating in the Mixed Nuts uh, organization in the Diamond Cutter Classics. And uh, this month, I've been trying to hide many, maybe some of you have been trying to reach me, uh, but I've been hiding and working very hard on uh, Nick Lashoff's text. Uh, Nick Lashoff for seven years uh, worked on a text by Arya Nagarjuna uh, from almost 2000 years ago. Uh, this is one of the oldest texts we're doing. And Nagarjuna is tough, a very difficult text. Uh, and he wrote a lot of works. Uh, he's most famous for his poetry. And of course, because he's uh, an Arya, he saw emptiness directly. He touched the diamond world directly. He's probably the most famous person uh, who ever did that. And then he wrote uh, wonderful books about it. Uh, and one particular set of books, it's called the, the Six Books of Nagarjuna. It's actually called Riksok Druk, which means uh, the Six Books of Logic. And I like to call it the Six Books on the Logic of Emptiness, uh, because what he's doing in those six books is proving uh, the idea of emptiness to different people. And we chose, you know, not one of the more famous books. So he's very famous. Nagarjan is very famous for a book called Wisdom, uh, uh, called The Root Text on Wisdom. And he's very, very famous for that. And he's also famous for some letters that he wrote to kings, uh, which are very, very famous. We are translating now one of those uh, with, with Nick, uh, which is called the... the the String of Precious Jewels, Ratnamala or Ratnavali. And then we are working on another text. As you know, uh, I've been teaching uh, wisdom according to a commentary for several years. Uh, we're working on those. But this book that we finished with Nick uh, just this week, just yesterday, actually, it's called The 60 Verses on Logic of Emptiness or How to Prove Emptiness. And it's not uh, the most famous of Nagarjuna's works, uh, but it is amazing. It's totally amazing. I, you know, working on it for seven years with Nick, you know, uh, by the way, if it's a new show, uh, my job today is to tell you something new or the news that's going on. And to me, the most amazing news is that after seven years, we finished this book. And I thought you might like to get an introduction to the book. You might like to know a little bit about the book. And I think the reason that it's not the most famous book by Arya Nagarjuna is that it's so difficult. It's quite difficult. And I think perhaps people didn't really understand it. You know, uh, Nagarjuna was famous that people didn't understand him. <laughs> And of course, he taught about emptiness and people misunderstood it for many centuries uh, to think that he meant that nothing exists or nothing matters or it's not important to be a nice person or a good person. And, you know, these are the common uh, misunderstandings of, of Nagarjuna's writing about emptiness. And actually, as you probably, as you well know, uh, the idea of emptiness means that uh, there's nothing around us 
I'm looking at some beautiful flowers right now. People have been bringing beautiful flowers for Veronica. And uh, and by the way, thank you for that and for all the help we've gotten from people. Uh, and these flowers, you know, actually they're coming from seeds in my mind, uh, like a pen. And uh, emptiness means there's no flowers in my hand, uh, which are not coming from my mind. And that's the only meaning of emptiness. And in the gardenist time, uh, people had misunderstood emptiness for about 700 years. And, uh, you know, it was a big obstacle for him to overcome, uh, to try to help people understand what emptiness really was. And we're so lucky to have this book. It's, it's very, very deep. Uh, we have translated an explanation by Gelsab J, and he's the you know number one student of Tsongkhapa, and uh, he he wrote a, a difficult explanation of a difficult book, and uh, Nick Lasha and myself uh, we worked really hard on it uh, for seven years, and we finished it. Uh, during that process, uh, because of John Brady's team's hard work, uh, the the, the Diamond Cutter uh, Classics Sources, which is the ALL project, um, we were able to find a copy of Gelsab J's notes, his personal notes. And these are personal notes he took uh, when he was uh, sitting in a, in a, a teaching by his teacher, Tsongkhapa, about this book by Nagarjuna. So we are so lucky uh, to have these personal notes that were taken by Gelsab J on this book. And we decided to translate those also. And uh, it was a big job. And it was hard to uh, find uh, good manuscripts. Uh, John Brady's team at ALL did a good job and got us manuscripts. Uh, so we were able to do that. Uh, so this is a beautiful book now. Uh, it's just about ready. And it's my job, my pleasant job, always to do an introduction. And when, before we publish the book, uh, we will have an introduction. And then it's my pleasant job, uh, two years from now, uh, I will take that book and make it into a, a DCI level. And it'll be a very deep uh, business success level. Uh, based on this 2000 year old book and that it's not a religious uh, teaching. It's not a, I don't know, it's not Buddhist teaching. It's a business teaching uh, from Nagarjuna's book and everybody in the world uh, likes them. Uh, many people in the world are using those uh, manuals from DCI where we take the ancient books of Asia and we turn them into success manuals for business success or personal success. So, um, you know, since I'm on the Peachtree World News Show today, and I'm giving you guys my personal news, and I, I really enjoy uh, being on the show. Thank you, Daniel, Hasso, uh, Johnny O. Uh, thank you, all the team, uh, for asking me to be on the show. And I, I thought you might take, like to take a look at the manuscript. Uh, it's still got some rough spots, but this is what I've been working on. I'm gonna show it to you here. Uh, here it is, let me move this out of the way. Okay, good. And I'll get Geshe Michael bigger for you guys. Okay, and let's go through here. So here's the, the book. Let me change the view for you. Mm, let's do it this way. Okay, good. Uh, so here's the new book. It's called Nothing is the Way It Seems, uh, the 60 Verses of Nagarjuna. And uh, it's a deep, deep teaching about how uh, emptiness uh, was first taught uh, 2,500 years ago. And there's the commentary by Gelsab J. Uh, his name is Dharma Rinchen, but he's he's not, uh, it doesn't mean Dharma like teaching. It's it just a personal name in, in uh, Tibetan language. Okay, and the root text. 
there's a nice carving of Nagarjuna. I like it. Uh, he's got these nagas over his head, and he was sort of a master of these dragons. Or it's a tradition they say that. Uh, here's the table of contents. Uh, it's not finished yet, uh, but it gives you the the different topics uh, in this in this book, and they're very deep and very long. The book itself is going to be about, I think, 500 pages or maybe a little bit less. Uh, there's only one ancient commentary on this book, and that was taught by Master Chandakirti. So you can kind of tell the, you know, in the diamond business, uh, we say that uh, you can tell uh, if a stone is real. Uh, for example, jade, when you are checking jade uh, to see if it's real, the first test you do as a gemologist uh, is to check the quality of the, of the sculptor. If the sculptor uh, was extremely skilled, then it's more likely that the stone is, is genuine because they don't give good stone to lousy carvers. Okay. And good carvers don't work on fake stone. Uh, so what you've got here is uh, Master Chandakirti, uh, the author of some of the most famous books on emptiness ever, <clears throat> who also did a, he did the only ancient commentary on this book. And we used that also. We used it a lot. <clears throat> so there's some uh, details of the book. Uh, there's a dedication to Aaron and Veronica. Uh, and then these are my notes uh, for the introduction. And something happened to me while I wrote it, and that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I wanted to see what kind of impact this book made uh, in the 2000 years after it was written. So I went to John Brady's database and I checked how many times uh, this book was quoted in the last 2000 years, who quoted it, <clears throat> and what part did they quote. Uh, so Nagarjuna, you know, 2000 years ago, he was hoping that people would understand emptiness. And you can kind of track using John Brady's database, you can see uh, how much of this teaching made it uh, across the 2000 years, what kind of ideas uh, of Nagarjuna survived for 2000 years? What kind of ideas were used by people uh, in the last 2000 years? Was he successful in trying to spread uh, the idea of emptiness to more people through this book? And we can tell that from John Brady's database because we can search the ancient books and we can see uh, what stuff survived. I thought uh, you might like to know, uh, there's one quotation that uh, survived uh, for 2000 years. Uh, and it, it was quoted just about 20 times uh, in, in later years, okay? And I'm gonna let me go through there quick. Uh, Let's see here. These are all the quotations that survived. Uh, hang on just a second. Okay. This is the, the one verse that survived. And, uh, and it says, we observe what we call the wearing out or coming to a rest from the simple wearing out of the cause. Uh, and that's a very, very important idea. And he's talking about how are we ever going to stop all our negativities? You see, like we get upset, uh, we get impatient, we get frustrated, we get unhappy. And he says, look, if you want that to stop, uh, I'll tell you something. You cannot stop it. You don't stop things. In this verse, this is the verse that survived for 2,000 years this became the most popular verse from this book. And it says, your, your negativities, your anger, your upset, impatient with people, desire for things, 
it's not going to wear out uh, on its own. Okay, it doesn't happen like that. You cannot stop it. Okay, you you can't say, I'm going to stop my impatience with other people. You have to wear out the cause. Okay, that's the one idea that survived for 2000 years. And what's the cause is misunderstanding where things are coming from. It's not understanding emptiness. These flowers, uh, these flowers are coming from seeds in my mind. And the irritating people I meet, the people that I get upset at, uh, they're also coming from seeds in my own mind. I cannot stop all the people who make me upset. I cannot stop all the things in my life that make me upset. This verse says, you cannot stop it. You have to stop the cause. You have to wear out the cause. And when the cause wears out, then the upset will wear out and you'll be a happy person all day, okay? How to wear out that, uh, you have to wear out misunderstanding, okay? Not understanding the flowers are coming from seeds. People we meet that we're upset at uh, also come from seeds. If you want to wear out those people, then you have to, if you want to wear out your anger or, or your, your negative emotions, you have to wear out the cause. When the cause wears out, the thing wears out. What's the cause? We don't understand that things are coming from us. They're coming from our own seeds. That's the one message from this book that survived for 2,000 years. And I think it's a great message for the Peace Tree Cafe today. Uh, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, we're kind of out of time. Uh, but thank you for tuning in to uh, Peace Tree World News. And I hope to see you at the next episode. Thank you. And thank you, you guys, for uh, Daniel, Hasso, Johnny, for, for all your hard work to make this show work. Thank you. <laughs>